One of the things I like to do when things are feeling particularly uncertain in the world or I'm just feeling out of sorts in my own life is to walk through cemeteries. It's a little harder to do around here. There literally aren't any on Palm Beach Island. But when we were up in Massachusetts, the historic Hingham Cemetery was just down the street from the rectory where we live. I'd take Delilah, our beautiful yellow lab husky mix of blessed memory with me, and we'd wander and in some cases sniff our way among the gravestones. Gravestones that included the town's first settlers dating back to the 1600s, a 19th century governor of Massachusetts, the state's youngest volunteer to fight and die in the Civil War, and a number of parishioners I had the privilege of burying over my 14 years as the local priest. It was always a special and sacred place to wander, but there was something extra special about moving through the familiar headstones on a crisp, fall day surrounded by an explosion of color. Now I know that for some there is no more depressing place than a cemetery. There's a reason we used to hold our breath when we drive past one as kids. In a cemetery, you are literally surrounded by death. And in each gravestone, you come face to face with the very fleeting nature of life. But I find that for me, walking through a cemetery is good for the soul. Rather than ghoulish or gloomy, I experience it as a place to reflect on life and faith. It offers perspective and reminds us that our own troubles, whether personal or civic, when placed in the broad context of human history, are not so unique. And I always think of the line from the prophet Isaiah, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. So in those headstones, I also see hope. Hope is not something that comes without grief. Hope is not untouched by pain and brokenness. Hope is not cut off from sadness or despair. Rather, hope, as we understand it as followers of Jesus Christ, is the light that shines in the darkness. And darkness does not and cannot overcome it. Whatever we're facing, whatever we're struggling with, whatever difficult situation we're confronting as individuals or collectively, hope abides. Hope endures. Hope stands forever. On this All Souls Sunday, we remember those we have known and loved and lost over the years. People who impacted our lives and helped shape our identities. People who were dear to us and cared for us. People who caused us great joy and, in some cases, deep pain. People with whom we may have had complicated relationships. People we wish desperately were still with us. So we bring grief, some sweet, some raw, some unresolved, with us this morning. And I invite you to embrace this swirl of emotions, not because it's always easy, but because grief, if we let it, can serve as a pathway to hope. As we just heard in St. Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica, 
We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. So grief and hope are inextricably linked, a point which to someone without faith sounds like utter foolishness. How can there be hope in the midst of loss? How can there be hope when all seems lost? How can there be hope when someone we love is dead and gone? These hard questions, these very human questions, always bring us back to where it all both ended and began, the cross of Christ. Hope is deeply embedded in grief in the same way that resurrection is deeply embedded in death. At the cross, Mary wept over the broken body of her son. At the cross, Jesus' closest friends all fled in terror. At the cross, God's only son was murdered like a common criminal. The cross was supposed to be the end. The final nail literally driven into this foolishness of faith through the cruelty of crucifixion. And yet, and yet, hope itself rises from the ashes of the grave. The bitterness of grief gives way to resurrection. Through the power of hope, grief is transformed into joy. That's the Easter story. That's our story. And it is precisely why we show up to worship God here week after week after week, to celebrate the power of hope, to dance on the grave of death and despair. None of which is to minimize anyone's feelings of grief. Grief makes our hearts hurt deeply and irreconcilably. Losing a loved one or grieving for what might have been leaves us with hearts that are heavy rather than full, with hearts fearful rather than hopeful, with hearts despairing rather than than joyful, and yet the light of hope shines in the darkness. That's the promise of the resurrection. That's the bedrock of our faith. Even when the light feels like a mere pinprick amid the shroud of surrounding darkness, it has the power to illuminate our hearts and cast aside despair. Every Sunday morning as we gather as a worshiping community to celebrate the Eucharist, the priest lifts his or her hands in prayer and invites us all to lift up our hearts. And together as a community, we lift them to the Lord. On this day, whether you lift a heavy heart, or a hopeful heart, an open heart, or a broken heart, remember the heart of Jesus, who loves us, who died for us, who walks with us, who rejoices with us, who weeps with us. The good news is that through faith in Jesus Christ, you can't live in the shadow of death without embracing the sunshine of hope. That's the gift of this day. That's the joy embedded in grief. 
And it's why, as we pray our loved ones home during every funeral that takes place here, we say the words of the commendation. Even at the grave, we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.